Amen. Praise the Lord. I want to welcome those that are joining us now by radio, by television, by live streaming from all around the world. If you're listening by radio, uh, feel free to go to www.theshepherdshouse.net for the entirety of of the program, and if you're watching by Facebook or YouTube, uh, please uh, share this uh, with a friend, uh, with a loved one, so they can join in our services. Also, by radio, uh, please tell somebody where you're listening, what channel it is, and invite them to come and be in service with us right here in Glasgow, Kentucky, in between two cow pastures. In the middle of nowhere, amen, bringing you the word of God, amen. All right, we're going to be reading some very familiar scripture today uh, found in St. Luke's Gospel, chapter number 19. Uh, some words that Jesus was saying uh, to his disciples and for all of the multitude uh, as he shared uh, his love, his word, and his joy, amen, through the power of the word of God. And then we're going to read a little bit uh, as Paul was teaching uh, Timothy and 2 Timothy, uh, some things here uh, that he was going to give warning that was going to happen in the last days, and we're going to see how close this is to the time that we're living right now today and how the Scripture is being fulfilled right before us. Amen. If you watch the news, man, I'm telling you, uh, you can tell a difference almost month by month, amen, how things are changing. It's not for the good. Uh, I'm not talking about the economy. I'm talking about, uh, you know, morals and principles and the standards, amen, changing and the love. People are getting more selfish, more self-centered to where the spirit of meism has risen up, amen. That's not the way that it needs to be. But we're going to be learning about a man uh, that had missed uh, the main thing in life that he needed to be seeking after. Then we're going to learn about how the uh, church and how the world is going to change in the end times. I'll be talking to you a little bit about some things that I have experienced and some things that I saw just in other churches this week, amen, that's so alarming that we need to be praying like we've never prayed before, holding on to our Christian values, holding on to uh, the right concepts of the Word of God and be thankful for what you receive from Christ. Amen. Praise the Lord. All right. In St. Luke's Gospel, chapter 19, and verse number 1 says, And Jesus entered and passed through Jericho. And behold, there was a man named Zacchaeus, which was the chief among the publicans, and he was rich. And he sought to see Jesus, who he was, and could not for the press, because he was little of stature. And he ran before and climbed up into a sycamore tree to see him, for he was to pass that way. And when Jesus came to the place, he looked up and saw him and said unto him, Zacchaeus, make haste and come down, for today I must abide at thy house. And he made haste and came down and received him joyfully. And when they saw it, they all murmured, saying that he was gone to be guest with a man that is a sinner. And Zacchaeus stood and said unto the Lord, Behold, Lord, the half of my goods I give to the poor. And if I've taken anything from any man by false accusation, I restore him fourfold. And Jesus said unto him, This day is salvation come to this house, for so much as he also is a son of Abraham. For the Son of Man is come to seek and to save that which was lost. Second Timothy chapter number 4, verse number 1 says, and this is Paul talking to his son in the Lord. I'm talking about his student, his younger 
preacher that he was instructing. I charge thee, therefore, before God and the Lord Jesus Christ, who shall judge the quick and the dead at his appearing and his kingdom. Preach the word, be instant in season, and excuse me, out of season. Reprove, rebuke, exhort with all long suffering and doctrine. For the time will come when they shall not endure sound doctrine, but after their own lust shall they heap to themselves teachers having itchy ears, and they shall turn away their ears from the truth and shall be turned unto fables. But watch thou in all things, endure afflictions, do the work of an evangelist, make full proof of thy ministry. For I am now ready to be offered, and the time of my departure is at hand. I have fought a good fight, I have finished my course. I have kept the faith. Henceforth there is laid up for me a crown of righteousness, which the Lord, the righteous judge, shall give me at that day, and not to me only, but unto all them also that love his appearing. Let us pray. Father, in the mighty name of Jesus, we come before you this day asking you, Lord, to bless and to move in this service today. Touch the hearts of everyone that's here this morning, Lord, sitting under the sound of my voice. I pray, God, to touch others that are joining us by radio in 176 countries around the world today and the millions that's watching by TV Father, I pray, dear God, that you would just touch those that are watching by live streaming. Lord, we know there's some that are sick and not able to be here this morning of my people that are watching by live streaming. I pray, dear God, to reach out and touch them, bring healing for their body, minister to the needs they've got during this service today, that, Lord, even though they're not able to be here, they will feel like that they're in the presence of the Lord and in the presence of this service. Lord, I pray, dear God, that you would just anoint us. Uh, Lord, we pray, God, to hide us behind the shadow of the cross that no glory would come to me in the flesh, but, Father, that the mighty name of Jesus, Lord, would be praised, uplifted, and glorified. For today, Lord, we know, uh, Lord, that we are nothing. I I know that I am nothing, Lord, and let all glory come to he who hung on the cross to die for my sins, resurrected three days later, and now he's sitting at the right hand of the Father. Lord, we pray, dear God, you would touch those, Lord, that would believe in all that would call on the loving name of Jesus, Lord. I pray, Father, let all glory, honor, and praise go to the King of the Jews. In the mighty name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. Looking back into the Word of God, we see a very familiar story about this man that was chief among the publicans. That means he was the leader, the greatest. He was the highest rank of all the tax collectors that there was in the area. Amen. If you want to know how well he's loved, amen, you concentrate on how you love the IRS here in America. Amen. And then and if you get a tax bill, Amen. You concentrate on how well you love to pay taxes. That was how well that Zacchaeus was thought of. He sure wasn't, amen, the most loved person, no doubt, that there was in the area. You may be here today, and you may think that, well, I'm not the most loved person that there is in the area. I've got so many flaws. I've made so many mistakes. My family don't understand me. Some people I went to school with really don't like me, and these over here don't like me because I've done this and it was wrong and I made all these mistakes. Uh, amen. Here was a man. Uh, amen. But what we read in the Word of God, no doubt. Uh, amen. He had collected money. Amen. By false uh, accusation or he would not have been willing. Uh, amen. To give it all back uh, and four times what he had overcharged people. Uh, amen. So therefore, no doubt. Uh, amen. Oh, Zacchaeus at one time, he was a crook. Uh, amen. But you know what Jesus does? 
says uh, he goes after those, uh, amen, that are in trouble, uh, amen, those that are in sin, uh, amen, those that the devil uh, has led them into captivity and led them into darkness, uh, amen, those that the devil, uh, amen, has caused them to fail, uh, amen, they may not be, uh, amen, top notch, uh, amen, in society, but when it comes to the kingdom of God, it doesn't matter if you're lower than a snake's belly. The king of glory is sitting at the right hand of the Father, and he's looking at you today, amen, because he loves you. Uh, it's not about the things that you've done that was wrong, but it's about your humility and your brokenness uh, and your willingness to come before him and admit, Lord, I have sinned uh, and come short of the glory of God. I have failed. Uh, I have done wrong, uh, and I need the Lord to come into my heart, into my life. Uh, I need to be lifted up uh, out of the mar of sin, uh, amen, and out of the shame, amen, that the devil's pushed me into. Uh, I need to be delivered. Uh, I need to be saved, uh, amen, and come to him, thank God, uh, amen, he don't throw the clay away, amen, thank God, uh, he doesn't kick and bruise the sinners, uh, amen, God hates sin, but he sure does love the sinner, amen, he doesn't step uh, on the head of the alcoholic, uh, amen, but he gives them deliverance, uh, amen, takes the shakes away, amen, takes the longing away, and the need for alcohol to where you think that you can't live, uh, amen, unless uh, you have a drink. Uh, we've got some ex-alcoholics uh, in our congregation. Lift your hand up, uh, all the ex-alcoholics, uh, amen. Aren't you glad, uh, amen, that Jesus came one day and delivered you, uh, amen, from alcoholism. Uh, it's not about a program. Uh, it's not about a, some stuff. Uh, amen, that you take through therapy. It's about being touched, uh, amen, by the hand of, uh, of the only begotten Son of God, uh, amen, that doesn't, uh, amen, listen, change uh, your lifestyle, uh, amen, just overnight, uh, amen, but it gives you different ideas uh, and thoughts uh, that does change your lifestyle, uh, amen, overnight, uh, amen, you don't go change your wardrobe, uh, amen, but you'll sure, uh, amen, lose your desires. Uh, I've heard testimony from people, uh, amen, that said that God completely changed me, delivered me from alcohol, and he done it in a moment's time uh, when I was at the altar praying, uh, and the Lord took me off of that. Uh, amen, I've dealt with drug addicts, uh, amen, that I had, it took everything, uh, amen, LSD, marijuana, amen, crack, uh, amen, crank, uh, amen, uh, methamphetamines, uh, and the most time I can't even say that word, but under the anointing I can say about anything, amen, God delivered delivered them, uh, amen, from that, uh, amen, now then they don't have to steal uh, to support their habit, uh, amen, their high comes from heaven, uh, amen, the what they drink from, uh, amen, comes through the Holy Spirit, uh, amen, they're walking, uh, amen, in joy and in peace because, uh, amen, they met Jesus. Woo, I've been waiting a week to get back and preach this. <laughs> Oh, let me tell you something, Jesus sure does love the sinners, and I sure do love to preach to those, amen, that don't have any hope, because I used to be just like you, amen, my life was in a wreck, amen, my home was in turmoil, amen, I was at the point of almost being suicidal, amen, until I broke one afternoon, amen, one Sunday afternoon in my bathtub, and I cried out to the Lord, amen, asking to take away my sins, my guilt and my shame, and he gloriously saved my soul. Praise the Lord. Amen, Brother Jimmy, was you a wild looking thing? Yeah, it was. Amen, I'd come right out of the 70s with the long sideburns and the hair down to here. Amen, I was one of them in the groove. Amen, type of people that day. I fit in with everybody else. Amen, but my life was a wreck. Amen, listen, my home was in trouble. Amen, I was in trouble at work. I was the most miserable creature that I felt like that walked this earth. Amen, but heaven came down and glory filled my soul. And I felt so unworthy. Amen, that the king of glory would take time out of his schedule. Amen, to step out of heaven and to cleanse my ugly, ungodly soul, amen, and to set me free, but I'm thankful that he loved me that much. Here old Zacchaeus was, he wasn't loved very much, amen, by people, amen, Zacchaeus was miserable, amen, there's no doubt Zacchaeus probably had more money, amen, 
than what he could spend. There's a lot of people today that put their hope, amen, in money. But I want you to know today, when all of life is over, every one of us, amen, will go in the exact same size grave, amen, about six foot long and about six foot deep and about two foot wide, amen, when all of life is over, everything that you've got, amen, it'll go to somebody else or it'll be thrown away, amen, there's things, no doubt, amen, that you cherish, amen, that your kids will say, that ain't nothing, amen, but junk, it ain't worth anything, but yet you would fight for it, and you won't even let the grandkids look at it unless you're protecting it. You understand what I'm saying? Amen. When all of this life is over, you're going to say goodbye to your favorite pocket knife. You're going to say goodbye, amen, to that thing that somebody gave you when you were 16 years old. Amen. Grandpa's watch. Amen. You're going to turn loose of it. Amen. The things that belong to the world. It's not going to matter. Amen. Anything to you anymore. It's going to be just as worthless today. Amen. It's lost hair. Hey man, my granddaughter took my cap off my head this week, my two-year-old. I was a holding her and loving on her. She, she pulled my cap off. She said, I'm going to play with your hair, Pa. She went to play my hair. My son was standing there and said, that ain't going to take long. <laughs> Amen, but see those things, amen, that you love the most, amen, it's not going to amount to anything, amen, when all of life is over, it's what you've obtained, amen, from heaven, amen, you're going to take to heaven with you, it's the things that you gave to other people, amen, that's going to make a difference, amen, the things that you have today, amen, are carnal, amen, they're not going to amount to anything, amen, but listen, I've got a home, on the other side, amen, of heaven, amen, on Hallelujah Avenue, I'm going to have a time, amen, when I get up there. Amen, some says I want this and I want that. I can imagine, amen, living, amen, in a house made of chocolate cake, amen, fried potatoes, amen, down the aisle, amen, living, amen, on Donut Avenue. I'm gonna have me a time, amen, the things I ain't supposed to have down here, I'll be able to eat, but see, it's all about, amen, Jesus and about finding him as our personal savior. So Zacchaeus, he heard of this man called Jesus. Zacchaeus not loved, by people. Zacchaeus probably wasn't even loved by himself. Amen. Zacchaeus had got everything that the world had. Amen. That would make him happy, but he wasn't enough. Amen. Any of y'all ever got to the place that you squeezed all the joy that you could out of everything that you had, but it just wasn't enough. Amen. Did you ever get to the place? Amen. You took vacations and you went to the most spectacular places. Amen. That there was in the world and you spent all kinds of money Amen, but when you got done with it, you said it just ain't enough. Amen, did you ever go, amen, to a concert and listen to somebody to help get your mind, amen, off the problems of the world and you thought, man, I'm gonna get entertained. Amen, but it just wasn't enough. Amen, you understand what I'm saying? Amen, but see, Zacchaeus, that day, he found enough. <laughs> he found enough. He found something, uh, amen, that was lasting, uh, something that was worth having. Uh, amen, sometimes we don't realize, uh, amen, what God's give us, uh, amen, till you get away from the things that God's gave you and then you don't realize uh, how much you enjoy doing what you do. Whew, amen. I preach four times every week at least four times. This next week, I got five because I'm going to go preach Thursday night at one of the churches here in the area. I'm going to preach five times this week. Man, I, I stay busy all the time. I, I went a whole week and didn't preach anything. That's why I'm fired up here today. I may have to preach a whole week's sermon. Amen. And one time, I got to get all this out. Amen. Listen, I'm, I love, amen, to preach the word of God. I love to be, amen, in the presence of the Holy Ghost. I love to be around God's people. Amen. Listen, and Zacchaeus, he finally found enough that day. Amen, he'd heard about Jesus. Amen, he'd heard different ones talk about it. I remember as a boy, amen, hearing daddy and my grandparents, amen, talk about the Lord and how good that he was. Amen, until I received him in my heart, it was hard for me to understand just how good and just how real, amen, he really is. Amen, to understand how bad that I needed him. And this is what I said to the Lord. And just a few moments, amen, after that I got saved, before I come out of the bathroom that day, I said, Lord, if I knew it had been this easy, 
I'd have done this a long time ago. And if I knew it had been this good, I'd have done it a long time ago. And Lord, please let me die before I ever get back in that kind of shape anymore. That's how glad I am that I've been set free. I'd rather be dead than to be back in that place. That's been over 36 years ago. Amen, I'm still going on. Amen, I'm not just feasting off of what I got 36 years ago, but I'm feasting over what I feel in my heart today. And what I know is real that still exists, that still lives inside of me. Amen, Zacchaeus, amen, he thought I've got to go find out more about Jesus. I've had all that the world has to offer. I've got everything, man, I've milked the world for all the joy that I can get out of it, but something's gonna have to give. I'm gonna have to have some peace. I've heard about Jesus. I've heard different ones tell about how good that he is. I've got to find out about him. So he went to a sycamore tree, and he thought, I'm short. There's no way to be able to see over the top of the heads of all these people. I can relate to this many times. Uh, me and my wife will be sitting somewhere and she'll sit down and somebody tall will sit in front of her and she'll get up and she'll move over. She says, I can't see over that lady's head. Every time that we go up to Brother Tommy Bates Church, there's a lady that comes, I don't know where she's from, but she'll wind up sitting just about the same place we do. And Jenny says, there's that sister. She's about that much taller than me, sitting in front of me, and she'll have to move over one so she can see the pulpit. She's short. Amen. I can relate to what uh, uh, that Zacchaeus is going through, and I know that she can relate to what Zacchaeus, uh, amen, is going through. You can't see over the top uh, of everybody's heads. Uh, I'm going to get up in that tree. Uh, I'm going to get on a limb up there. I'm not going to bother the Lord. Uh, I'm not going to interfere with what he's doing. I'm not going to keep anybody else from talking to him. I just got to get to where I can see him. Uh, I just got to get to where I'm close to him and I heard that he's going to be coming right down this path and I'm going to be this close on a bottom limb. Amen. Just as close as I can. I'm going to get a look at him like many people can't get this out in the crowd. And here comes Jesus and no doubt there was hundreds of people thronging him saying hallelujah. Hi, Hosanna to the Lamb of God. Blessed be the King of glory. Blessed be the King of the Jews. Amen, no doubt. Amen, that they were having a time as he came down that street. Amen, but when Zacchaeus was hanging out on that limb, sitting up there thinking he's getting closer, he's getting closer, he's getting closer. Wow, man, I got a front row seat right here. And all at once Jesus stopped in the midst of all of the thousands and thousands of people. He looked up in that tree and he saw Zacchaeus, hurry up and come down from there. I'm going to your house for dinner today. Woo-wee. Don't you know old Zacchaeus thought, uh, 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 me? You mean, uh, you're going to my house, the whole country hates my guts. The whole country uh, don't like me. I'm, I'm the least thought of that there is in the area. There's nobody in this area as big a sinner. Look at all the things that I've done, Lord. I've stole from people. I pocketed the tax money. I've, I've done all these things that was wrong. Lord, I've done these things. And you're going to come to my house to be with me? So he went down to his house and here come all the religious people, all the folks on the left. Oh, he got quiet in here then. Hey man, that argues with them. some people today, you say, ain't it beautiful sunshine? That's not sunshine, that's a spaceship. No, it's not, it's just, oh, it ain't a spaceship. Some people, just, they just got the argue in them. Anyway, you understand what I'm saying. So here they all come. And they said, Lord, do you not know who this man is? Do you not understand? You're going to be seen with the most vile, ungodly, ungodly most heathen person that's done everything can be thought of on the list of sinners. He's the biggest devil that there is in the area. And the Lord looked at him and said, I know I know who he is, but he's the son of Abraham and the son of man he's came to seek and to save that which was lost. Amen, if you're a creature that's made by God, amen, a human being that's got a soul, amen, God loves you, Jesus loves you, amen, if you feel ashamed and you feel guilty, amen, it's not my preaching that's getting to you, it's your sins that's smothering you to death, amen, you need to come and give your heart to the Lord, amen, here looking, amen, how 
that uh, Zacchaeus no doubt came down that day. Uh, amen. Jesus went to eat lunch with him that day. Uh, amen. The, uh, the religious crowd attacked him. Uh, it didn't uh, bother Jesus one little bit. He had a purpose. Uh, amen. See, today, if you were the only one uh, that there was to be saved, Jesus would have still came to this earth and suffered and died for you. And he would have done that for me. Not because we're good. Not because that we're worthy. Not because, uh, amen, of our family, but simply because, uh, amen, we believe and we cried out to the Lord. Now let's go looking and seeing what the great apostle Paul said uh, many years later uh, to young Timothy. He put a warning out to Timothy also in his writings uh, that would go for hundreds of years later for all the young preachers uh, uh, to be able to understand uh, that in the last days there's going to come perilous times. In the last days, they're going to heat them themselves. Teachers having itchy ears, what does heat mean? That means they're going to pile on. They're going to uh, do everything they can uh, to get all of the, uh, the false teachings that they can. Uh, anybody that will entertain by the flesh. Now, here's something that's going to blow the minds of a lot of people. And when I say this, and you're going to think, where in the world are you coming from now? I'm going to tell you where I'm coming from uh, here in just a moment. Amen. In the last days that we are in right now, if you want a good church, get all the Spirit of God and all the Word of God that you can, amen, and you'll have a good church. If you want a good attendance, get all the flesh you can and push the Spirit out because that's not what people's wanting. Amen. The people's not wanting the Spirit of God. They're not wanting the truth. They want to heap to themselves teachers having itchy ears. Amen. Just a few minutes ago, I was telling the congregation here at the shepherd's house of an experience that I had uh, visiting uh, a Pentecostal Holiness Church, uh, supposed to be, uh, down in Florida this last week. And when I went in, uh, the preacher never did get a hold of the anointing. There was no power. There was no spirit in anything. He said, it's all smiles uh, telling you what I want you, what you want to hear, making you feel welcome and grin and grin and grin. Amen. If I could grin people into heaven, I'd get them saved by the millions. Look here. Hey, man, there's several millions see me grin right there. That gets you right in. Hey, man, but that ain't going to get you into heaven. You got to be born again of the Spirit and the power of God. You got to confess to the Lord that you're a sinner and on your way to hell and you're willing to stop doing. Hey, man, girls, stop sleeping with your boyfriends. Boys, stop looking to see who you can sleep with. I'm playing, ain't I? Hey, man, quit doing drugs. Well, Brother Jimmy, the drugs gives me a buzz and makes me feel good. You ought to try Jesus. Hey, man, you go beat that drug dealer half to death if you knew how that he didn't have nothing uh, amen but a bunch of low powered stuff he was selling you at a high price uh, amen but what Jesus has uh, amen is high powered stuff uh, and it's done been paid for at Calvary amen it's free to you uh, amen praise the Lord that's how good that it is uh, amen but here I uh, went and everything was different people had no respect uh, amen for the house of God no respect for each other amen they were hung on amen donuts and coffee listen folks uh, if you when we go to the house of God, we need to go, amen, to be fed the word of God and fed the spirit, amen. It's not going, amen, to a theater, amen. If you go watch Superman, get you some popcorn and a Coke, that's fine, amen. But you're not going to church to watch Superman, amen, or Beetlejuice or whatever it is that you're watching on television, amen, or the theater or SpongeBob SquarePants or whoever, amen, when you go to the house of God, amen, you need to understand, amen, that the word of God is the only thing standing between men's souls and a pit in hell, amen, and we need to reference that and reference the time the Holy Spirit comes, amen, for just a few minutes, amen, into a sanctuary, amen, that's been dead dedicated, uh, amen, and set aside, uh, amen, for God's work uh, and has been sanctified through and by the presence of God, through prayer and through the reading of the word of God. If you can get the word of God, and the most of that's been watered down, uh, amen, across the pool pits in the land today that you have nothing but fairy tales. Amen, and stories, amen, stories about a dog and how his life really touched people. Boy, it just brings a tear to some people's eyes. I don't have nothing against dogs, but they didn't one die on the cross for me. 
Amen. You understand what I'm saying? Uh, amen. You don't need to take the place, amen, of uh, that. See, it's not about, uh, amen, our outward appearance. Uh, it's about what's on the inside of us, uh, amen, that's going to make the difference. Uh, but when the inside gets clean, uh, amen, the outside's going to straighten up too. Uh, amen. It might not dress like I dress, uh, but it's going to straighten up. Amen, the drugs will go, the alcohol will go. Amen, the, uh, the boyfriends, uh, amen, will go. Uh, the girlfriends, uh, amen, that wants to do things that's not right, uh, amen, they're gonna go, uh, amen, and you'll be careful about who you're with. You understand what I'm saying? I could share some things with you. I'm not going to because some of them folks may be watching my television and I don't wanna hurt any of my previous girlfriends or people's uh, feelings that probably done forgot about me, but you never know. Amen, down through the years. Let me tell you something. Amen, I didn't live right uh, for a few years when I was a teenager, but I had strong teachings. You understand what I'm saying? I had strong teachings that I grew up under and a praying mom and daddy, amen, that loved me. And I want you to know I knew when things was wrong uh, and I felt guilty before I ever done it, uh, amen, and it kept me from doing some things, uh, amen, that some boys uh, and girls did that was my age and I'm just gonna quit. I'm not telling you I was perfect. I'd done things I shouldn't have done. But when I give my heart to the Lord, all that stopped, and my life was completely changed then. Amen. But Paul said that there'll be a time they'll heap to themselves people that will offer them, amen, Danish in the foyer and donuts. Free coffee for everybody that will come to church. And come on in. I ain't going to say nothing about what you do. Wear your caps in the pool pit. Wear your shorts in your flip-flops. It'll be all right. Get up there and sing. And then sit down and play with the cell phone while I'm preaching. Uh-uh. Not going to work. Well, Brother Jimmy, that's probably why you ain't got a full church. That's the reason why. Amen. Hell's going to be full. Amen. The Bible says, straight is the gate and narrow is the way which leadeth unto life, and few there be that finds it. But broad is the gate and wide is the way that leads unto destruction, and many there be that enters in thereat. Hell is enlarging itself. Amen. I want you to know they're not having to work overtime on heaven to get it to hold the people. Do you understand what I'm saying? But they're having to do some construction in hell, amen, to hold all of those, uh, amen, that are headed in the right direction. Uh, amen, Paul was telling Timothy, there's gonna be a day coming. Uh, they won't be able to stand the truth. Uh, they'll run from the truth. Uh, amen, there in the scripture I read to you, it said they would stop up their ears, uh, amen, so that they don't have to hear the truth. Uh, amen, they'll do anything and everything, uh, amen, they can think of, uh, amen, to get away from the truth, uh, amen, because the truth offends them. Amen. The truth makes them sleepy. Amen. Uh, they just feel relaxed. I don't get sleepy till I go to church. Amen. All you got to do is crawl in hell about 30 seconds and you wake up. Amen. And realize, amen, this is not a game that we're playing. Amen. If you don't think death is real, go by the cemetery up the road today and see how many people you can call out of the grave. Amen. Read the testimony. Amen. That's been carved into the uh, limestone. Amen. Amen, and, and different things, uh, amen, for the headstones out there and see if they did not really exist. Uh, amen, check with people that's got pictures, uh, amen, of those that's done left this world, uh, amen, by the way of the grave uh, and see if they did not exist at one time. But today, they're only a memory and a picture and a headstone proving that they were once here. Amen, but there's a time coming that the graves, uh, amen, shall burst open uh, and the dead in Christ shall rise uh, and face God, amen, and there's many today, amen, that don't even think about death. I believe there's people today, you could take them, put them in hell, they come back and say, I'll be glad this is over with. Man, don't interest me a bit. I don't believe in none of this junk anyway. Ain't no God. If there's a God, he'd be right here in front of me. There'll be a judgment day one day after a while. See, there is a God here today. I felt him all over me. I couldn't preach like this if it wasn't a God. I got him in my heart. I know that he's real. Amen. I'm more sure that Jesus is real than I am that you all are real. Amen. I can see y'all. Take my hand right there. You're actually here. I believe in Jesus more than I do John Borkman. I'm looking at you, John. I believe you're really here. I believe you're really alive, but I believe in Jesus more than I do you. Amen, I believe he's more real than you are, even though I can feel your hand. <laughs> I can feel him too. That's how real that I know that he is. Let me tell you what's being taught out there in the land. I looked on Facebook this week, and one of the pastors uh, had put a little clip, uh, amen, from a funeral. 
uh, where the church was full. They showed the casket right in front of the altar uh, and, and the pulpit, and the preacher was up preaching, and this is what the preacher said. He said, there is no such thing as hell. He said, people will try to scare you with a fairy tale that there's going to be a judgment. People will try to tell you that there's an awful place to go to called hell. Don't believe those things, those fairy tales, those myths, those things that people are telling you. Don't be scared. And people are saying, amen. Yes, Lord, preach it, brother. And I was thinking, the preacher is deceived and the whole church that was packed, amen, was on their way to hell because ain't none of them read the word of God. Amen, hell's mentioned, amen, more in the Bible, amen, than heaven is. Listen, folks, amen, we need to understand, amen, that this is real. I don't hear nobody preach about it anymore. You're right, and that's the reason why the land is in the shape that it's in today. That's the reason why, amen, the school systems, amen, it's got police officers, amen, instead of a paddle in them, amen, years ago, amen, a little 90 pound a 62-year-old woman, amen, can take a paddle, amen, and keep a football player in line. Now then today, amen, you gotta have armed guards, amen, it's because of lack of knowledge of the word of God and what's being taught in a lot of the, of the schools today is, is antichrist, amen, uh, uh, be your own boss, be your own thing. If you don't agree with the American public, you're wrong and you're a nerd. That's what's being taught. Amen, they changed the history books just a few years ago. Absolutely, they sure did. Amen, they rewrote a bunch of things. Amen, to change it. Amen, some of the things that they recall actually happening. I lived through some of those things. Saw it on television as it was happening. Amen, I ain't got it recorded right. But they're putting that stuff, amen, into kids' minds. Amen, and this is what's going on. Amen, in America today, churches are being watered down. Amen, the word of God, amen, is being laughed at in mocked, and you got people uh, in the name of the Lord standing up in the church, uh, amen, that's supposed to be, amen, uh, churches of God. Uh, I'm not talking about church of God denomination. I'm talking about churches, Protestant churches and uh, Catholic churches or whatever it may be, amen, proclaiming to be Christians, uh, amen, when they've never been born again of the Spirit and the power of God, and there's some today, amen, lives, uh, amen, just like they are a child of hell, uh, and they go to church, uh, take their Bible with them, uh, amen, they go right in there and they sing when the roll is called up yonder I'll be there they leave satisfied and happy amen and they feel like they've been fulfilled amen and, and they got uh, they think they've got everything fixed up and where they've been lied to they're deceived amen they're playing church and don't realize that they're playing church amen we're in a time right now today amen you better take your word of God you better read the word of God at home amen you better live the word of God you better study the word of God you better know that you know that you know that you passed from death unto life because you love the brethren. Amen. God will give you love. Amen. Enough to make you love your mother-in-law. Make you love your wife. Make you love your husband. Amen. Instead of holding a grudge against your wife, you'll be wanting to give her a lip lock before you get home this afternoon. Amen. Listen, God puts love. Amen. Enjoy. Somebody come to me the other day and said, the Lord told me to divorce my wife. I looked him right straight eyeball to eyeball. Amen. Right straight straight in his face, I said, God didn't tell you to leave your wife. God puts homes together. God makes each other love one another, forgive one another. Don't you come off of that bunch of junk. Amen, if she's doing a bunch of perverted things or, or whatever, it's a different story. Amen, those that does wrong, bring them before the church. And I don't mean jump up, amen, and tell everybody what your wife's done. That means come to the pastor and the leaders of the church, amen, and say, look, I need to talk to you. My wife's out of control. She He's doing these things. Uh, can you help me? And let the man of God, if he's worth his salt, uh, amen, sit down and talk to that wife uh, and try to win her over to the Lord. Uh, amen, listen, and if she won't hear the word of God, then we have to consider her as being a heather now. Uh, amen, but you don't just jump up uh, and God tell you to go divorce somebody without going through the proper proceedings. Uh, and I'm not talking about going to a lawyer. I'm talking about uh, going to the mighty counselor first. Uh, amen, take it to him. Uh, amen, let him do these things. Uh, today they're wanting, uh, amen, the word of God, uh, amen, to be watered down. Uh, tell me what I want to hear. Tell me how pretty I am. I'd have to repent if I said some of y'all were pretty. <laughs> amen. I'm not saying you're ugly. I'm just saying you ain't pretty. 
You're somewhere called in between. Somewhere called in between the two universes. You didn't hardly make it to pretty, and you're not ugly enough to hit. You're in between. You're, you're kind of in between somewhere, uh, amen, but me telling you that you're pretty, amen, listen, it's not gonna get you into heaven. Uh, well, Brother Jimmy, I don't know about all these things, uh, amen, I want you to understand right now, there's not one atheist in hell, and there'll never be an atheist. You mean an atheist won't go to hell? Oh, yeah, they'll go, but they won't be atheists when they get there. It won't take 10 seconds to think, oh, my goodness, I've been lied to. Oh, my goodness. It was right in front of me, and how could I not have seen that? Amen. The same thing happened to me just before that I got saved. Amen. I thought, man, I had the world by the tail. I thought, I'm young. I'm full of myself. Amen. Them old fogey people, they ain't got no sense. Amen. But you know what I found out? Them old fogey people a whole lot smarter than I was. Amen. Because stupid was written all over my face. Amen. I was a throwing my marriage away and didn't realize it. I was causing my wife little hell. Amen. And didn't realize what I was doing. Amen. Because I thought I was doing everything on my own. I didn't need nobody to tell me what to do. This is my life. I'll do what I want to when I bless it, get ready to do it. And the Lord let me know. Amen, there's somebody bigger than I am. See, when you're fighting God, you're gonna realize your arm's too short. Amen, but his is not. Amen, sooner or later, he's gonna get your attention. Amen, sooner or later, he's gonna bring you to your senses. Amen, Zacchaeus had to come to the place, amen, that he realized, I've got all this money, I've done all this stuff to accumulate this, and I'm miserable. Amen, people don't like me. Well, Brother Jimmy, people really respects me because of the alcohol I can buy for a party. People really respects me when I pull up in that nice looking car. No, they're not. They resent you because you didn't give them one free of charge. That's the day that we're in today. Amen. Respect has changed. A few years ago, people used to respect people. Amen. That, that worked for a living and people that worked hard and was able to accumulate things. Now today, they want to tear up and destroy Amen. I saw a young man that their parents bought uh, this little toy plastic thing to play with, give $25 for it just a few days ago. He went to pushing on it. He said, look, I could tear this up if I wanted to. I done got a dent in it already. And the person sitting there said, why would you want to tear that up? Don't tear that up. That costs it $25. He said, I don't care. <laughs> it don't matter to me. Adults has got the same attitude. Amen. They pay taxes and complain about it and then go out and shoot holes and uh, signs on the side of the road. Amen. You think we're real bright? <laughs> we're doing it to ourselves. Amen. There's others today. Their mind is so warped. They're calling good evil and evil good. They, they're living in this imaginary world. Everything I learned in school is the truth. I'm smart. Amen. I was taught to believe in myself, and I do. You don't have to be taught to believe in yourself. That's just an instinct that comes. Amen. What you got to believe is, amen, how helpless, amen, how useless, amen, and how lost that you are, amen, without God. That's when you get to your right mind, and you come in your right senses, and you go to thinking the right way. Amen, it's no, amen, there's a difference, amen, and, and, and being where you're able to take care of yourself and being the place that you're, I don't need anybody to help you. See, Paul warned of these last days. These days are here today. The most of the messages that you hear on television, it's not about getting saved, it's about money. Now, how many prosperity preachers did you ever hear say repent? No, it's all about sow seed. Seed, 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 seed. So seed, 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 seed. Amen. I've had different ones. So I wish it wouldn't take up offering plates so much. We pass it once a week, and it kills some people in. Amen. So you can come tonight, and again Wednesday night, there won't be nothing mentioned in the money, won't be an offering plate. Amen. Passed. But yet people use it as excuses. Some says, I wish I could come to a, this type of service. I just can't get out of bed in the morning. Then next time you get ready to get your gallbladder tucking out and they schedule you to be there at 6 o'clock, you tell them, I don't get up to 10, buster. 
and I'll get there about 1245, and you'll run me in there and get me out, or you ain't take my gallbladder out. You know what the doctor's going to say? Well, just keep it. It's yours. Amen. I got people standing in line. If you ain't got no more sense than to die, then die. You'll do it on my schedule. But we got in such a time that people wants the churches, amen, to fix the services to, uh, comp, uh, to configure into their schedule. Amen. They want the Lord to bless in a certain way. They want a certain song style. They want it to last a certain amount of time. They want to tell you, I don't like it when you say these things, and I don't like it when you say those things. When you get saved, you'll like all of it. It comes out of the Word of God. Amen. The things you don't like, you'll learn to be quiet. Man, isn't silence precious at times? Amen. Learn to be quiet. Amen. And accept. Amen. The truth. Amen. I remember Ronald Reagan doing a, a, a talk one time. And while he was talking, amen, he was telling the truth. Man, he was speaking with authority. Man, such power that man had. And people over there running run, 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 run their mouth, a bunch of hecklers, kind of like what Donald Trump's going through with right now. And finally, Ronald Reagan, holding on to the microphone, turned his head and said, Oh, shut up. Hey Amen, and went back to giving his address that he was giving. Uh, hey Amen, enough is enough. Uh, hey Amen, you can howl, hey Amen, like something ain't got no sense. Uh, hey Amen, how much intelligence do you think that a wolf has got? Ooh. Boy, you can hear a pin drop in this place. Amen. That's how much sense a bunch of people I see on television. I, amen. When they get done with all that noise, I thought, what in the world is wrong with you? You couldn't, you couldn't look at your hand, uh, amen, and figure out first five or 14 and a half. Oh. We need a moment of silence. <laughs> Somebody run to get the front door open. We need some oxygen back in here. Everybody's going, with, <gasps> what's he going to do next? You never know about me, but I'm done. Let me tell you something, folks. We're living in a time today where the devil has got so much influence. He could have somebody get on CNN and say there's a crisis. Everybody in America flood themselves to the Empire State Building and all they possibly can jump off at 5 p.m. this afternoon. Well, Jimmy, people would laugh. No, there wouldn't. There'd be millions dead. They'd never stop and ask, where's this coming from? Is this the truth? No, because I've been told this for years. Everybody else is doing it. I'm seeing them lined up in front of the door the elevator's full. The stairs is full. I'm afraid I won't get up here in time to jump by 5 o'clock. Why are you jumping? I don't know. That dude said jump. And I'm going to jump because he said jump. Well, Jimmy, people ain't that silly. Have you ever heard of somebody in Waco, Texas, getting to drink the Kool-Aid for a spaceship to come and pick him up at 9 a.m. in the morning. And let's all drink our Kool-Aid and lay down and pull the cover up and be comfortable because when the spaceship gets here, Jesus is going to get every one of us. Well, there wasn't no spaceship. You understand what I'm saying? The only person that got anything out of that was the undertakers in the area as children was given Kool-Aid by their moms and dads thinking they were doing their children the right thing. Moms and dads giving themselves. There's been times where there was cult leaders would take young girls out of the, of the congregation and saying, God told me to have them. And people would fall for that. You would think, Brother Jimmy, it looks like him people were nuts. Oh, no. They're no more nuts than some of the things I see on television right now. They're no more nuts to some of the newscasters that I see. They're not stupid. They've been deceived. 
And the thing about deception is people will fight, even give their lives to support something that's not right. And yet they'll fall for just about anything. We're in a time where people are saying, let's love each other, let's tolerate each other, let's agree with each other. You can't agree with wrong just so you can get along with them. There's a time to stand. There's a time to speak. There's a time to be silent. There's a time to love. There's a time of peace. There's a time of war. And it don't matter what's going on, somebody is going to disagree with you. You can run outside and say, the sun's shining, and somebody say, it's not shining. <laughs> it's coming a flood. There's no clouds. No worry. Beautiful day. It's the sun shining. It's 12 noon. It's pouring down rain. I've been taught that ever since I was in school. When the sun comes up like that, it means it's raining. And when it's raining, that means we've got dry weather. And they're convinced. You can't tell them otherwise because they've been brainwashed. Now, I've done some heavy anointed preaching, and I've done some teaching today. Was everybody going to like this? It don't matter because there's going to be a day coming you'll face this message, and I'll face it too. I'll face the Lord to whether or not I preached everything within spirit, power, and love, and you will face whether or not you acted upon it or you let it run off like water off a duck's back and saying, I didn't like it. If you were to give me some coffee, <laughs> give me some donuts to eat, and get up here and smile, enjoy your best life now. Don't you wish every day was a Friday? Just think positive. Take charge of your life, and everything's wonderful. Smile. Choose to have a good day today, and everything's going to be lovely. But see, I'm not going to do that. I'm going to tell you, repent. There's a judgment day coming. If you're in sin, Jesus is not going to push you away. He's going to love you. He's going to see you when you go to the sycamore tree and you climb and you reach out with interest, with enthusiasm, and with belief, Jesus will stop everything he's doing. See, there was thousands of people, and I done brought this out once, thousands of people on both sides of the street the only one that stopped Jesus was the biggest sinner that there was in the whole area. And Jesus stopped and looked up to him and said, hurry up and come down from there. What that meant was, I see you looking for me. I feel your hunger. I feel the need that you're longing for in your heart. Hurry up. Come down. I'm going to give you everything you ever wanted and a whole lot more. Amen. Stand with me, if you would, please. This altar is open. While they get us a song, I'm going to say goodbye to the radio, TV, live streaming audience. God bless you. We'll be back tonight, Lord willing, at 6.15 p.m. here Central Standard Time in America. While they get us a